Okay, we're going to talk about parallel wiring. Two concepts in this section of the textbook. We're going to define parallel wiring, and then guess what? You guessed it. We are going to calculate the equivalent resistance for resistors connected in parallel. So, First of all, let's define parallel wiring. Devices wired in parallel have the same voltage across them. Again, you can't know if it's parallel or series unless you know where the battery is. Where's the battery? Here's the battery. Happy day. If you take a wire from that battery and run it through a resistor and then come back to the other side of the battery, and then you take another wire and you connect it up to the positives terminal and run it through another resistor, then what can you say about the resist about the voltage across each of these resistors? And you say, well, that's not that hard because here's a battery and I could just look at this circuit, the circuit through R1 is pretty much independent of the circuit through R2. And I know based on the examples we did in the last section that if the voltage is V across the battery, then it has the same voltage has to apply to that resistor. Same thing for the out outer circuit. Uh, the voltage must be the same as the voltage across the battery through this resistor, across this resistor R2. You can draw this diagram this way. This is exactly the same situation as this. How so? Here's my battery. I've got only one wire coming out of the positive terminal of the battery. This wire comes over here to what we're going to call a junction where the wire splits. Some of the current goes through the resistor R2, some of it goes through R1. Then the current finishes its journey through the two resistors, comes back to here through another junction, and then comes back into the battery. Why is this exactly the same as that? And the answer is most easily shown in the following way. Whatever the voltage is here, whatever the electric potential is at this point in this wire, can you tell me what the electric potential is at this point in this highly conducting wire? And you say, they're the same, because it's highly conducting. And I say, you're right. So everywhere along here, the voltage is the same. But now we got this junction here. And you say, well, wait a second here. I've got this highly conducting wire and it's splitting into two. But I maintain that everywhere along here, every point here is going to be at the same voltage as this point, or this point, or that point. And every point along here, because it's highly conducting, the electric potential is the same. So here, 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 and here, the potential, the electric potential is all the same value. Well, is the electric potential the same here on the right side of the, of the resistor as it is here? You say, no, I don't think so. And I say, you're, you're right. Let me go with uh, another color here. Sure enough, the electric potential here, all the way along this side of the circuit, the electric potential is going to be different than on the left side of the circuit. So, so everywhere here is at some 
potential VB. So the electric potential at every place that's marked green is different at a potential VB than at VA. And VA minus VB is the potential difference across this resistor and is the same as the potential difference across this resistor and is the same as the potential difference across the battery. So the voltage across um, R1 is V. The voltage across um, R2 is also V. And the voltage across the battery is also V. So the bottom line here is that knowing where the battery is and seeing how these voltages work out, the, the devices wired in parallel have the same voltage across them. So, uh, you say, well, how is this one equivalent with this one? Let's actually go through that exercise too, because sometimes it's a little bit hard for folks to see how this works. I'm claiming that everything over on the right-hand side of this, of this circuit is at some potential VB. So I'm claiming that this is at VB, this is all at VB, and that the potential on the left side is all at VA. And that VA minus VB is just V. The voltage across the battery is the, the difference between the electric potentials on the left side of the battery versus the right side of the battery. Okay, I think we beat that to death. Um, when two resistors are connecting in parallel, each receives current from the battery as if the other were not present. I think I've convinced you that this, this circuit is equivalent to that one. Why? Because each of these resistors has the same voltage across it as a battery. And, and, and so it really doesn't matter if you've got two separate wires coming out of the battery here, and then they um, and each with each of them going to a separate resistor versus just one wire coming out of the battery and then that wire splits to go to the two resistors. Either way, they're connected in parallel. All right, household wiring is is parallel wiring. So all of the um, circuit elements, the light bulbs and the switches, the different things to power your TV and your stereo, etc., cetera, um, and light bulbs are wired in parallel with the source. So here's my AC source, 120 volts. I've got one branch that comes along, all, this whole branch here is at, a, is at the same electric potential. Everywhere along here, at every instant in time, is all that area that I just marked red, at, at every instant in time is always at the same potential because it's a highly conducting wire and you don't see potential drops through, through highly conducting wires. One way to actually see that, V equals IR, if the resistance of a wire, if it's highly conducting, its resistance will be very small. And the, for a given current, the voltage difference will also be very small. So the electric potential is not going to vary very much, if at all, anywhere in those wires. But if we now say, when we look at the other side, I think, we, I think this is getting clear now, everywhere along here,
all those are at a separate potential than the red potential. But everywhere that's green is at the same voltage with the same potential. Okay, so now, um, why do we wire them all in, in parallel for a household? It just means that you're not gonna, uh, it's, it's as if each circuit element gets the full power of the, of the source, rather than having to share it in a series arrangement. And with a couple of the demonstrations we'll show here in just a minute, we'll make that abundantly clear about, uh, about the brightness of bulbs that are placed in parallel versus in series. Um, the other thing that's important in household circuit is there is something that's placed in series with the circuit, and that's called the fuse. So the fuse, or the circuit breaker, So the circuit breaker is placed in series with this source. Why? Because if there's too much current in this main branch of the circuit, then that uh, circuit breaker is going to blow. If you, if you hook two um, space heaters to it, for example, then the circuit's going to blow, and the circuit breaker is going to trip. You don't want to just put it on an individual switch because that will only protect that particular switch. You want to protect this wire that's going to have a lot of current. It's delivering current to each of these elements that are in parallel. Okay, uh, this is the, the hydrodynamic equivalence to, to what we've been talking about. Two parallel pipe sections are equivalent to a single pipe of the same length and the same total cross-sectional area. So if you have two pipes with each with a, uh, smaller cross-sectional areas, A1 and A2, if you, if you put that together and get a, a bigger cross-section, then, um, and that's the equivalent what we see with, with resistors in parallel. Okay, so now let's calculate the equivalent resistance for resistors connected in parallel. Well, how do we do it? Here, and we'll talk more about this later, but we talked about this place where these three wires come together as a, it's called a junction. And if we're gonna think about this current coming out of the battery, then when it comes to this junction, the current's going to split into two pieces. Current I1 that goes through resistor R1 and current I2 that goes through resistor R2, not R2D2. And the total current is going to be the sum of those two. And we're going to talk more about this later as well. But you're going to add those two currents together to get the total current coming out of the out of the battery. Because remember that battery is, is working harder to, to, to power both resistors as opposed to just one alone. Well, the, the next step actually is just to relate the current through resistor 1 to the voltage and the resistance. So V1 equals I1 R1. And, um, but the voltage across resistor 1, as we've argued, is going to be the same as the voltage across resistor 2, and it's the same as the voltage across the battery. So V1 is just V. And if I want to solve for I1, I can easily do it by dividing this equation by R1. And that gives me V over R1. And my day is happy. I'm going to put this I1 into here. And that's what I get, V over R1. But I can do the same for resistor 2. I2 is V over R2. 
And now we're almost done. The hard work is done. Because I can now factor out this V. So here's my V that I factor out. And then I get uh, 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. And the claim there is that I want to replace this with a single resistor, an equivalent resistor for a resistor in parallel, for resistors in parallel. And we know that the current has to be a voltage over a resistance, so we're going to write this as V over RP. And what that says, if you compare this to this, the Vs are the same on both sides, and therefore 1 over RP equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2, plus if you had another resistor in there, 1 over R3, etc. So this is the equivalent resistor resistance for resistors in parallel with each other. How does it compare with the equivalent resist? And that's what this P means here. It means parallel. We had an RS for the equivalent resistor resistance for resistors in series. And now um, the RS is a simple one. You just add up the resistors. That's no big deal. Here you've got a little more complicated relationship that you have to solve for the uh, equivalent resistance. All right, let's see if we can actually do a real problem. Here's a voltage source. Here's two resistors that are supposed to re represent the remote speaker and the main speaker. One's a 4 ohm, the other's an 8 ohm speaker. And we're interested in replacing these two resistance to find the actual equivalent resistance. Um, and how do we find it? Well, we know the equation for it. Instead of adding them up, we have to add up their reciprocals, 1 over. So 1 over RP is 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. Happy day. Well, we can plug the values in. R1 is 8 ohms. It's fun to draw that symbol, omega. Just a fun symbol to draw. Plus 1 over R2, but R2 is 4 ohms. All right. Well, we can now uh, add these two together. We can do it on our calculator, but let's do the actual algebra and find a common denominator. When you're adding fractions, you have to find a common denominator, right? Well, the common denominator is 8. And so I've got 1 over 8 ohms to... To convert this one to have the same common denominator, I have to multiply the numerator and the denominator by 2. Well, now we have our common denominator, and we can now just add up the numerators. 1 plus 2 is 3. And now there's a temptation and it's happened to me before, it will happen to you, sometime you'll do this and you'll say, hey, happy day. The equivalent resistance is 3 eighths ohms. Is that correct? Uh, short answer is no. We um, made a strategic error here. It's not this equivalent resistance that's 3 eighths ohms. It's one over the equivalent resistance. So let's just write this down again. And now let's find the equivalent resistance. Well, these are two fractions that are equal to each other. You can cross multiply. Um, 3 times RP is 8 ohms times 1. That's a cross multiplication. And RP, therefore, is 8 thirds ohms. And that, my friends, is 2.67.
Now there is a trick, a hint, that will save you from utter embarrassment or falling into this trap. And the hint is to always carry the units along. Notice I kept the units of ohms. And that unit here is in the denominator. And that is a hint to me that this can't possibly be a resistance. It must be one over a resistance because the ohm is in the denominator. So that's just a little hint. Um, see if we've um, find the equivalent resistance of the two speakers, the total current supplied by the receiver. Well, that's an important question. So if we want the total current I uh, supplied by the receiver, this will split into two pieces, I1 and I2. And I1 and I2, we can find for V equals IR. What's I1? V over R. What's the V? Well, the V is the voltage across R1. What's that? You say, well, it's the same as the voltage across the battery, or the receiver in this case. And I say, you're absolutely right. Again, 6 volts. Um, this is R1. What's R1? It's 8 ohms. And so I1, therefore, 6 divided by 8 is 3 over 4, 0 0.75 amps. What's I2? Oh, we've already done all the hard work. It's V over R2. Well, V is still 6 volts. R2 is 4 ohms. 6 over 4 is 3 over 2. That's 1 and a half amps. So let's take a second and look at this and see if it makes sense to us. I1, the current through this big resistor, is small compared with the current through this small resistor. So that's similar to the idea of uh, the electricity follows a path of least resistance. So you get the most current through the smallest resistor and the least current through the biggest resistor. What's the total current? supplied by the receiver. Well, we're running out of space here, but the total current is I1 plus I2. We know I1, it's 0.75. We know I2, it's 1.5. So that's 2.25 amps is the current supplied by the receiver. Finally, the current in each speaker, we already did that. We've got these right here. And D, the power dissipated in each speaker. Now, how would you find that? Well, power dissipated in speaker 1, we can find that by I1 squared times R1. And plugging in I1, zero point seven five amps squared times R1, which is four ohms. Work out the number, whatever it turns out to be. Do the similar thing with I2. Um, there is all the calculations. IRMS, VRMS that we've just done. Our P is 2.67. Um, there's the average power 4.5. In this case, I did it with I times V. That should work out to be the same. Um, oh, it's 0.75, one and a half. Yeah. 
So we used RMS. It's the same equivalent. So we've done the, done the calculation already. 